Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and today I am just going to be crocheting a little project and answering some of you guys' questions that I got from my Instagram story. I asked you guys to ask me questions. Um, I didn't specify any topics, but most of them are crochet related. Um, there were a lot. I picked out a few ones. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So let's get started. I am currently working on this. So I'm just gonna be crocheting on that while I answer the questions. But um, to start us off today with the questions. The first question I have is how did you start crocheting? And the answer to that is I don't really remember, honestly. So whenever I was about eight years old or so, um, I'm not sure, pretty young, my great grandmother, she tried to teach me how to crochet. Um, I remember I made a little blanket for my stuffed animal, it was navy blue. It was made with single crochets and it was terrible. <laughs> um, it was lopsided, wonky, it wasn't great. But um, that was the only thing I made with her her and I didn't make anything else after that but years later whenever I was in probably middle school I don't actually remember like when I for sure started crocheting but um, it was around middle school I decided to reteach myself so I bought the supplies got on YouTube and taught myself with some tutorials and I've been doing it ever since and I love it Next question is, do you line your tops with anything? Do you line your tops with any anything so they aren't see-through? Um the answer to that question is no, I do not line my tops unless um the person that bought it messaged me and specifically asked me to line their top for them. Um most of my tops I use a uh, four weight yarn and I use um, five millimeter hook um, if you've seen any of my tutorials you know um, but they are not generally see-through at all um, yeah <laughs> and um, you know I just sell them online so if People, you know, want a lining, like I said, they can message me and ask me to put a lining in it. Um, some people like wearing them without linings, and I'm all for that. But for the most part, most of the tops that I make are not see-through, so I don't line them. Next up, we've got, do you wet block your products? And the answer to that is no. Um, I have never blocked anything. Um, I don't, I don't know. You know, I've been crocheting, I've been in the knitting and crocheting community for like eight years and just there's some things that I don't do and blocking is one of them. And the other one is gauge. I don't, I can't. Those things just, they're not in, they're not in my vocabulary. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why, I just don't do it. Can you make a pattern or tutorial of the orange peekaboo top? Yes, absolutely. Um, I just recently put the top for sale, like the finished product, on my Etsy. Um, so once I get going on those orders, um, I am going to be making a YouTube tutorial for the design. So I would look for that pretty soon, probably within the next month or so. Um, but yeah, look forward to that. Next. Oh, the next question is, could you make more tutorials on your YouTube? Absolutely. Like I said, I am making the peekaboo top tutorial. I'm also making this a tutorial right now. This is a tutorial for a granny stitch hexagon um, cardigan. I posted 
a video of me wearing one in rainbow on my TikTok the other day. Um, I'm making another one in the trans flag pride colors. And yes, I'm making this tutorial. I'm gonna make a peekaboo tutorial and I'm making this video right now. So I would like to make more tutorials all the time, but I feel like I never have any free time because most of the time I am making orders for my Etsy, so yes. The next question is, how did you get the idea of starting a small business? Hmm. So I guess the answer to that is that um, I was knitting, uh, no, I wasn't knitting, I was crocheting for years and I just, I had a lot. I had a lot of yarn, I had a lot of things that I had crocheted. Um, I was making things for my friends, I was making things for family members, um, you know, and I loved it so much. Like I love creating, I love the act of crocheting and knitting. Um, I love making things, like I love designing things, everything like that. And um, you know, people were telling me, they were like, you should start a business. Um, so I, I, at first I didn't think that I could, um, I didn't know how, um, but basically it was just, I had a strong passion for knitting and crocheting. I did it a bunch, I had a bunch of items and things and I didn't think about starting I didn't really think about starting a business until people started telling me to start a business, you know? Um, like people were saying, your stuff is really good, you should sell this, and I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but um, I've been doing crochet since I was pretty young, and it wasn't like trendy at the time, you know, like, like it is on TikTok now to like have your own small business and whatever, um, but you know, whenever I was crocheting in like middle school, early high school, um, it wasn't a cool thing to do yet, if that makes sense. So that's why I didn't think about it um, until people started telling me that I should do it. The next question is, where do you get all the designs for your tops? So um, it's a mixture. Kind of, it's kind of a mixture. So um, nearly all of the tops that you see on my Instagram, um, all of the tops that you see on my YouTube are my own designs. So I made them, designed them, I continue making them, they're mine. Um, but occasionally if I see something that I absolutely love, um, from another designer, I go and buy their pattern from um, Etsy. I don't usually use Ravelry just because it's kind of, I don't know, I've never, never tried it. Um, but I do not make YouTube tutorials about other people's patterns because that would be giving away their pattern for free and that's not okay. Um, and I also do not sell other people's um, finished yeah, I don't sell the finished products from other people's patterns unless they specifically say that that's okay. Like, I design my own patterns, I share them on YouTube, you guys make them, you guys can sell them. That's totally fine, I would just love to get credit for the design, you know? Um, so if a designer says, yeah, you can totally sell the finished product, I do. But most of the things that I sell, everything you see on my YouTube, most of the things you see on my Instagram are my own designs. The next question is, do you mind if I modify your pattern and sell it? Yes, that is totally fine. Um, that is kind of how you start designing your own products, is taking little bits and pieces from other people's crochet designs, or you take ideas from other people's work, you take you know basic stitches, and you change them, and you make them unique to yourself. Next question is, what do you do when you get bored of making the same tops? That's a good question because I make the same tops over and over again pretty much all day, every day, because I sell the same designs on my Etsy and I get a lot of orders for them. 
so I end up making the same design. But um, basically whenever I get bored of that, um, if I'm not overly busy in my shop, if I am busy in my shop, then I just keep making them. Um, but if I have time to take a break, I really like taking a break by designing something new. So I usually, I'll sit down with some cool yarn color um, that isn't available on my site and I try to mix colors, make a new design, make something fun, and then it's kind of like a refresh button and then I will go back to working after that. Or I make something crazy like a big cardigan, you know, you just, you never know. Is it a lot of trial and error for coming up with patterns? And I'm going to say yes and no, because um, I can make up a pattern for a bralette, the things that I make all the time and just super easy. I just start crocheting and something brand new comes out of my hands and I'm like, wow, I did that. Um, but if it's something like that I don't know much about, um, that like I'm not really sure about, like let's say cardigans or sweaters, um, cause I don't really make much cardigans or sweaters. Like, I am making this design um, based on other people's ideas, but um, I am making it from, you know, no pattern. I'm just making it straight out of my brain. Um, but the first time, it did take me a little bit to get comfortable and like figure out how to do it nicely. Um, but the second time that I'm going for it right now, this should be much quicker, much easier. Um, if I were to try to make a sweater, I would be a little confused. Um, basically, if I'm really familiar with something, making up a pattern, super easy, super quick. It's just like, boom, done, something brand new. Um, but if it's something that I'm not familiar with, ergo, like um, sweaters, cardigans, you know, hats, stuff like that, um, that would be a little bit more difficult. The next question is, what did you study and what are your future plans for work slash crochet? Um, well, I went to school for, I believe it was two years. Um, I mean, it was just very recently, but I literally can't remember. I went to school for two years um, for fashion design and um, it was, my major was fashion design and product development. So I took a lot of um, sewing classes, I took textile classes, I took Photoshop classes, um, I took a lot of, you know, design oriented classes. Um, but yeah, I was going to school for fashion design, um, but my true, you know, desire is crochet and knitting. Um, I guess my plans for my future um, are to just keep doing this business until I can't anymore. Maybe I would love to open like a storefront someday where I sell pieces um, and I also sell maybe some yarn, um, like a little local yarn shop, um, but I would also sell like some clothing items that I make there. The next question is, what is your design making process like I guess I kind of talked about this earlier, but basically it's like I think of something in my head and then I think about ways that I can accomplish that thing. So I was thinking of this cardigan and I was like, I, I knew exactly what I wanted the cardigan to look like in my mind. So um, I was like, what do I need to do? with my hands basically to achieve that. Um, I wanted it to be chunky, but I wanted it to be lightweight. So I'm using a thin yarn with a very thick hook and that is achieving the chunky look lightweight combo. And now that I have a lot of experience, most of the time it works out really nicely. Um, but in the past, whenever I didn't have a lot of experience, it was much harder for me to translate what was in my brain to my hands in real life. But um, now that I've been crocheting for about eight years, it's much, much easier to bring my thoughts and ideas and designs to life. So um, the next question, I got a lot of questions about this. Um, how did you grow your account? 
I've been trying to build my audience, but it fluctuates. Okay, I'm just, I'm gonna guess that they're specifically talking about my TikTok because that is kind of the only place that I have a lot of followers. Um, my Instagram is not really popping and um, YouTube, I, well, I am about to hit 20,000 subscribers. Thank you guys, I love you, crazy. Yeah, TikTok is my most um, popping place there is. I think I, at the moment I have 166,000 followers on TikTok. So I'll give you tips for TikTok. So <clears throat> as far as um, getting popular on TikTok goes, I would say follow the trends because that's how I started out. Um, follow the trends, use trending sounds, use trending hashtags um, because if you do something that's like old, that's, that's new, um, especially if you use your own sounds, it's not going to get as many views as using a trending sound with a trend, trending hashtags. So after you have like the trending stuff down, you're following trends, you're looking at trending hashtags and stuff like that. Um, I would say the second thing that is important is going to be video quality because, you know, people, people like to watch videos of higher quality. So um, make sure if you can film, you know, in sunlight, in front of windows, um, if you can get yourself a ring light, that would be nice too. Depending on your phone, you may have to use your back camera. Um, I have a iPhone XS. The front camera is good. Uh, the back camera is better. But yeah, try to aim for a good lighting, good camera quality um, and stuff like that. After that, pretty much just keep trying and wait. It's really hard to get a small account going and get attention um, unless you have, like have a viral video right off the bat. But I will say from experience, once you start gaining followers, once you get that initial like startup, um, it's so much easier to gain followers from there. Okay, next. How did you get people to finally buy from your shop? I don't know. So I opened my shop um, a little bit after I turned 18 because you have to be 18 to open an Etsy. I don't know, because I see so many, so many young people with Etsy's and like, how did you do that? Because whenever I was trying to open an Etsy in like 2017, it wasn't working for me, so. Yeah, I had to wait. I had to wait until I was 18. But anyway, I did not get a sale for the first six months. I felt very down. I felt like I failed. I felt upset. I was like, for sure, my business is gonna take off. I'm gonna quit my fast food job, which I didn't do until uh, six months ago, mind you. But yeah, I think probably how I got my first sales were probably by luck, um, just from people like searching around Etsy because I didn't have a TikTok at the time and I was only advertising through my um, my uh, my Instagram account. And, you know, I would like hashtag crochet, uh, try to post good pictures and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it was a little bit of luck and also, um, I think product presentation has a huge impact on whether or not you're gonna get sales on your Etsy. So whenever you're listing things on Etsy, make sure you have a lot of photos of it, like good, good quality photos, very well lit photos, photos from every angle. Um, people want to know exactly what they're buying. If you're selling physical products, make sure you have measurements, make sure you have a bunch of details, 
um, like what it's made of, where it was made, um, basically anything that anybody would probably ask you a question about, put it in your description. Um, another thing about Etsy is um, using tags. Tags are really important on Etsy so that people can just find your listings. Whenever they're looking up things. Um, and this is kind of the same with gaining... This would be kind of the same as gaining followers on TikTok. Once you get started, it's so much easier to keep going because um, nobody really wants to buy from an Etsy shop that has zero sales. But you would definitely buy from an Etsy shop that has 500 sales, yeah? So getting started is hard, but once you get started, it's, it's okay. The next question is, this one's kind of fun. If you had all the time in the world, what is one thing you would crochet for yourself? If I had all the time in the world, I would crochet myself like so many sweaters and cardigans and just every, every, everything. <laughs> like every, because um, I love sweaters and I think they're beautiful. <laughs> Um, I probably wouldn't crochet myself sweaters. I would actually knit myself sweaters. But yeah, I really like wearing sweaters. I want to make some sweater vests. I don't know. I would make one of everything. Sometimes I wish that I could just pause time and crochet for a couple hours. It'd be like three o'clock in the afternoon. I would just hit pause. I would crochet for like four hours and then I would resume at 3 p.m. You know? <laughs> Just so that I would have more time to crochet. <laughs> I think about it a lot. Anyway, the last question was how or why did you get into yarn crafts? And, you know, I think the answer to that is that I have always been a very creative person. Um, my grandmother, she taught me how to embroider whenever I was very young. She also taught me how to sew. We made clothing together, we made quilts together, um, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, my, like I said earlier, my great grandmother, she taught me how to crochet. Um, I have always been really interested in art drawing, um, stuff like that. Whenever I was younger, I believe I had a phase where I wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, whenever I grew up. So, um, I got a lot of like fashion designer kids kits where, um, you know, they would have, um, body outlines. I, they're called something. I just, I can't right now. And then you would draw the clothes on them and then they had little fabric swatches that you could put on and uh, yeah so there was a lot of that going on um, I also had a duct tape phase where I made I made and designed duct tape clothing duct tape purses duct tape wallets I made myself a duct tape sun hat it had a bow on it and everything it was beautiful um, I made myself shoes don't just don't don't ask I don't <laughs> yeah um, I made a lot of friendship bracelets I did basically I did everything um, except for I never did like the band loom thingy because that didn't get popular until after I had started crocheting and I was like I'm done crocheting is my thing I don't need anything else but basically I have always been artsy I've always been into designing I've always loved making things um, so once I started knitting and crocheting, I was kind of like, this is, this is my, this is my thing. This is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> um, also, um, the loom knit hats, um, in my elementary school, we had to do loom knit hats in my art class. 
so they taught us how to make hats. I loved it so much I asked my teacher if I could keep it for a little while and then um, after I had to turn it back in, my parents bought me one for myself. So yeah, I used to illuminate hats all the time. But yes, that is a little bit about me. There were more questions, but I'm going to cut it off there. Um, I, I don't know if I answered any of these questions in my last um, Q&A, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I've gotten some work, work done, at least. Um, like I said, I'm making a tutorial for this cardigan. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, it's the same as my rainbow one. I'm just doing the um, trans flag this time. I will be coming out with a YouTube tutorial for my peekaboo top design. And hopefully I have more time to make sweaters and cardigans and all the things that I love. That I love. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm sorry that my dog was whining. You were whining a lot. I have all my windows open for, for the light and he just sees people and birds outside and he just can't help it. He's so cute though. I gotta go back to work, sir. No. Well, anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this Q&A. If you want me to do another one, um, you can leave questions you know, in the comments below. Um, you can follow me on my Instagram. Um, that is gonna be linked in the description down below. Um, but that is usually where I ask for questions on my Instagram story. Um, if you guys enjoyed, please give the video a thumbs up. That really helps me in the YouTube algorithm. Um, I want to say thank you for 20,000 subscribers because I know it's going to hit soon and I love you all. Um, if you want to follow any of my social medias, all of them are going to be linked down below. If you want to spend more time with me and chat with me, um, I have a Discord server and I also have a Twitch where I live stream and I crochet and I talk to people. Um, it's really fun. I would really love to see some of you guys there. Just say, hey, I'm here from your YouTube channel. I'll be like, that is so awesome. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go now. Subscribe. Are you subscribed to Passionate Kelsey? He's not. <laughs>